This video is all about packing small items, small packages. Simple sales for good profit. Hi everyone, I'm Vicki with Avante Avenue. As I said in the intro, this video is about packing small items. So if you're curious, keep watching. This first item is a pair of pierced earrings. I really like using these inexpensive foam sheets for jewelry, especially earrings and pins. For pierced earrings, just remove the earring back. It's really easy to push the earring back through the foam. I'm just doing a little test to see how much foam I need to protect the earrings, and I cut off any excess. I will save these little pieces of foam because I might be able to use them on something else. I'm just rolling it up and applying some tape. Now let's just see if I can get it to fit back in this tiny little zip closure bag. It fits. I applied my thank you label and then I'll ship it in a padded envelope. Be sure to watch all the way to the end because I have something new that I'm using now for jewelry. I still use the foam, but I have something else that I like to use as well. I have this boxed ornament and I'd like to ship it in a padded envelope, but I don't want it to get crushed. So I have some scrap cardboard, nothing special. I'm just going to wrap it around here. And I could cut this off, but I think I'll just give it a little tape. It overlaps a little bit. So now it has some protection from crushing. And then I can just slip this into my padded envelope. There you go. How simple is that? Plastic lids. How do we pack plastic lids? These two replacement Corningware white plastic lid covers sold for $24.95, which I was pretty happy. It sold at full price plus shipping. And guess what? I got them for free at a garage sale. And they're kind of an odd size. I don't have any boxes that will work. I don't have anything that's square and short unless I really cut down a box. My first thought is what can I do to stabilize these? I need a box. I don't have a box. So let's reinforce these instead. I've got my cutting board, some scrap cardboard, and I'm going to cut out a piece to fit around this. Utility knife. I always save all my scrap. I don't need this much length, so I'm going to cut some of this off. It doesn't have to be perfect. And I'm going to even this end up just a little bit. Okay, so there's my scrap cardboard. Fits pretty good. Let's wrap some bubble wrap around this. But not so much bubble wrap that I can't fit it into a padded envelope. So I'm going to use small bubble wrap. Just putting this in the center. Well, let's get our thank you note on here. I'm going to add my thank you note that I run 30 up on a sheet of labels. Add on here. Got small bubble wrap. Wrapping it over. Just using some masking tape. Tucking this down and up. Same thing on the other end. And now we've reinforced this so it, it, it can't bend. It's really good. Let's find a padded envelope. I have a large eBay padded envelope. I'm going to put this inside here. And just to add a little extra protection, we're going to add another piece of scrap cardboard just for some stability on top. Not covering the whole thing. We know it can't bend, but just a little more protection on top. And there you go. Seal it up. And I know it has this pull tab, but I don't trust it. I'm going to add some tape. I don't want this getting caught in a machine. I don't want it tearing open along the way. And then I take a pen and write the first and last initials of the buyer and the state it's going to. And these lids that I sold for $24.95, you saw it came to $33.97 with shipping, are going out to JR in Ohio. So very simple 
but it's something that I do all the time. I just don't typically show it to you, but it's a great way to use a padded envelope and yet reinforce it at the same time. Here's a small Christmas ornament that sold, and I could put it in a small box, or I can show you how to reinforce this as well. What did this sell for? $14.97 plus shipping. I have some scrap cardboard that looks like it would fit pretty well. Let's trim this down. It's so small I think I can do without a ruler. Let's check the fit again. It's a little bit long. I think I'll cut about almost an inch off. That looks pretty good. Now let's bubble wrap this. And you can use smaller, large bubble wrap, whatever you think it takes. I'm going to wrap this over the top quite a bit. I'm just going to go with the small. Some tape, using masking tape, fold this over. It's pretty well padded on top, and it is resin. Let's get the thank you label on here. And then I have a small eBay padded envelope. Again, I've stabilized this. It's not going to bend. Got plenty of padding on top. And I don't know about you, but I'm not excited about these extra tabs. So I do cut that off. I'm going to fold this to fit tighter, making it slightly smaller. I'm going to add a little bit of tape. Tape to the sides. I don't want this getting caught in a machine. And there you go. This little package is going out to, my writing's pretty bad, but it's going out to LJ in Arizona. Let's get it in the mail. Have you ever shipped a spoon? I have a neat way that I do it using a padded envelope. Keep watching, I'll show you. I don't pick up a lot of spoons to resell, but I did buy a grab bag at the ReStore, and this is one of those spoons. It's a vintage Imperial stainless steel serving spoon and it sold for $14.95 plus shipping. I'm trying to do this video one-handed, so bear with me as I show you how I packed it. I wrapped it in tissue paper and then stabilized the spoon on a piece of scrap cardboard. Then I wrapped the entire thing in large bubble wrap. I'm using a large eBay padded envelope. And as you can see, I have the spoon pushed to one side of the envelope. Even as I push it inside the envelope, I make sure it's to one side only. Now that I know where the center fold is, using scissors, I cut the flap to that center fold that I made. Now I have two end flaps. I peel off the silver foil and fold one flap over and seal it. Then I roll the envelope in half lengthwise. Again, pull the silver foil and fold the flap down and press it to seal. One of the tips in using this technique is to add a lot of packing tape on the outside so there's no open flaps Nothing that could get caught in a machine, you want to tape down really well. But I use this for all kinds of things that are long and narrow. Give it a try, it works. Keep watching, there's more. How about a Christmas ornament? Those are usually little. I have this little deer, very tiny and it is crushable, so I need to protect it. I always keep small boxes on hand. This is a five by four by two. It's pretty good. A little bit of bubble wrap. Get the tape pressed down. And the small box will fit into a six by nine padded envelope. It will, just have to get it going. It's a snug fit, but it makes it, and that's what matters. And I always add a little extra tape to the flap. Make sure that it doesn't get caught in the machines. All right, let's get it in the mail. And I have this little guy. Um, it is ceramic or porcelain. It has a lot of crazing, lots of faux fur, cute as can be. I'm going to start with some tissue paper on the diagonal. Start wrapping it around gently and adding just a piece of regular tape, nothing special. Let's get some bubble wrap around it. I'm going to start with a layer of small bubble wrap. I'm just going to wrap this up over his head just a little bit. 
some masking tape. I think I want to give this narrow part a little more protection. I just have this odd scrap of bubble wrap. I'm just going to kind of fold it and wrap it around and tape it. I think he's ready for large bubble wrap on the diagonal. Test everything before I tape it. I think I can scoot it over a little bit. So using masking tape again. Let's take a measurement. About seven to eight inches by four by three and a half. As you know, I keep all different box sizes on hand. This is a seven by five by five. I use it a lot. It's not an eBay box. It's just one that I purchased. I'm adding another piece of bubble wrap on the diagonal. Let's slide it in carefully. That's a pretty good fit. I just need to add maybe a couple of air pillows on top. I think two air pillows will do it. I hope. Yep, I'll get it taped up and in the mail. Here's something new that I'm using when I have something small like this Boy Scout match holder. It's just a little cardboard pillow box. The end that has the little uh, cut in it, you would put that in first. Close this up. I don't even think this needs any bubble wrap. I think it's going to be fine. It's metal. Close that end up. And now it's at least one inch thick to meet the minimum requirements for USPS First Class. To qualify for USPS First Class package, it needs to be one inch thick. Most post offices do not enforce that, but some do. So I decided to try these cardboard little pillows out for jewelry and smalls. Then I don't have to put a bunch of bubble wrap in the bag. So I think that's going to do it, and I'll get it in the mail. If you like these kind of videos, we appreciate a thumbs up. I invite you to like, subscribe, and ring that bell for notifications. And as always, thanks for watching. I'm Vicki with Avante Avenue. We'll see you soon. Simple sales for good profit.